Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us again today on our unnamed podcast. We're still looking for a name. Um, my name is Robert Demergen, and this is Andrew McGarry. Hi, how's it going? Courtney is in the back recording, as usual. Hello. Um, and today, what are we going to be talking about today? Today, we're going to be talking about, uh, this is a heavy topic and not for the faint of heart. And I kind of want to say a disclaimer before getting into this, that that we may be saying some things here that are uncomfortable and, and difficult to talk about, but that's been the point of this podcast to, to get into these, these deeper issues. Yeah. Today we're going to be talking about really the, the sexual culture in America and yeah. really the world and where this is headed. Um, and so just a little bit of an outline of where we'll be going. Um, I want to talk about the pornography issue. That's a, that's a serious global topic, issue, a personal issue in as the well church, for me. outside yes. of the church, in and outside of the church. Um, and I want to talk about the history of how America got to where America is specifically and then second, I want to look at uh, Jeffrey Epstein as kind of an example of how this is going. So. Yeah, yeah. I think we'll probably touch on forgiveness too if we have time. Yeah. 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 I think an important part of this is, um, as I've kind of researched this, there's a lot of hate that can be put on on people, that, that, especially when we talk about pedophilia and these kinds of things. These are, these are sick and awful things. But at the same time, we're going we're gonna to wrestle with how do we even offer forgiveness to that, to a person such as this? How do we? So, um... How about we just get get right into it? Um, I was I was watching something called the Conqueror series a, a little while back, and in that series they talk about kind of the history of how how pornography and and the sexual culture in America. I mean, rife with the sexual identity issues and things like that in the culture. Um, th they pointed to one individual, and that was uh, Alfred Kinsey, Doctor Alfred Kinsey. He was a psychologist. When was that? The 19... I'd say right around World War II? No, after that. After 50s, that? 60s. Okay. He was a sexologist. Sexologist, yes. And he studied... And he, he his two most famous works, I believe, are Human Sexuality in the, in the Human Male and Human Sexuality in the Human Female. And these, these scientific um, public, public, publications um, were extremely influential in the American legal system. Um, and so, uh, and so I'd like, and so actually I'd, I'd reference if anyone likes to, would like to watch that series, I really suggest that because they really lay out how his science was not only, well, it, number one, it was gathered, I'd say illegally with some Nazi pedophiles back in, Woof. yeah. And so that's, that's serious. Oh, I stand corrected. So it's, it's, uh, he died in 56. So it would have been around probably well, the thirties, well, forties Okay. that he did yeah. some of this really shady research. And the sad thing is, is it, it, he, and so kind of putting this together, he influenced Hugh Hefner. We know who Hugh Hefner is, Playboy magazine. Yep. Okay, so so a lot, and then what's interesting is that I think originally Playboy was actually um, encouraging women. It's like, this is for women. You know, I think, not not all of it, but I remember re he watching used, something. Yeah, Hugh Hefner would use these. Like, these, we're strengthening the woman at one point. I remember reading something about that. This faulty research yeah. as a tool to yeah. liberate um the restrictions, the societal restrictions, cultural restrictions on Male and pornography, female, yeah. on, you know, free sex. This is kind of before the sexual revolution of the 60s yeah. and 70s hit. And, uh, yeah, just very, very perverse stuff. It, it opened the door to what we have today. Definitely. I mean, because, I mean, especially when it comes to how pornography is literally viewed as art. I think legally, I, I was I was reading something. I, I need to do more research. Or art is just pornographic, which you know? which is obscene. It's and and to the fact that this the effects that this has on 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 the human brain, especially a child's brain. We'll get into that later about mm. who is actually viewing this and how the restrictions work. You know, on people being able to access this kind of quote unquote art for goodness sake. Um, and and we'll get into that a little bit later. But but yeah. So so K Kinsey to Hugh Hefner to really how this is the sexual revolution. Um, to what we have to a lot of what we have today, um, and so I guess uh, moving forward, um, we wanted to talk about uh, Epstein, Epstein, and how this is kind of like we're seeing that these sexual problems in America are going. They're they're far worse than this. Where you know with with the Jeffrey Epstein kind of what would you call it scandal or yeah scandal just this, definitely this, a scandal, <laughs> big <laughs> scandal covered up. Massive cover up. So talk about that. Talk about that a little bit. Well, you can't say that it's a cover up outright. Well, explain it I to mean, people who who don't know. I guess. So what what was it? You could. So the the Epstein scandal is uh, basically there was this I don't know 
financial advisor. I forget exactly what job he did yeah. officially, you know, on the record. Um, this guy would procure young, young women, yeah. girls, not even women yet. He would procure them and he would use them. He would traffic them. He would give them to the wealthy elite of different companies, different, different, companies, yeah. different nations. You know, if you, so his, uh, once he was arrested, his little black book kind of came yeah. out. It was exposed. Um, it may have even been exposed years ago. I can't, I can't exactly recall, but I was, I was looking through it this summer when this whole thing kind of broke Yeah, and he has names in there, you know, famous actors, politicians, media moguls, bankers, like you have, you have lots of Hollywood, you know, famous actors and actresses yeah, in yeah. there. Um, you have the, the Prince Andrew, you know, the second mm. son of Queen Elizabeth II. You have so many people from mm -hmm. high society, you know, the, the top 1% of the globe. Mm -hmm. You have a thousand names in there. Yeah. These thousand people did not want their names to be exposed. Sure. Yeah. What happens? Well, Epstein ends up dead, and that's where the meme Epstein yeah, didn't yeah. kill himself comes from. Like, it's all over the place, yeah, and yeah. news articles are now reporting on it because this story is, it's been, it's been silenced, but... <laughs> Talk about but, the reporter. Remember that reporter we saw? So there was a hot mic incident with what was it, an ABC reporter? Yeah, I don't I don't remember her name, but she said she was collecting information three years ago. She said she had some of this stuff and she was she was trying to bring it to light. Or yeah. at least she was kind of she was kind of aware of what was going on and she didn't come forward about it. And now she comes forward saying, Oh, I you know, I had this story three years ago, but it got shut down because my executives or, you know, the my uh, my boss basically said it wasn't hard enough yeah, evidence, yeah. and so they shut it down. But like, if you look at his, if you look at Epstein's black book, you know that some of these people were the ones that shut it down. Some of the people in his black book would have been the ones that didn't want this sort of mm. information to get out into Same. the global media because it would have exposed them. It would yeah. have exposed that horrible things they're doing. This is sex with minors. This is pedophilia, yeah, this and is, yeah, it's it's a nightmare. And, and what bothers me is this is. This, I mean, and this is what stirs the American population to like, this is where we're going to get into like revenge. Like we get so angry. How dare you do this? It's, I feel like it's weird not to go off on a tangent. Go, but go ahead. I mean, I, I feel like, I don't know, culture's kind of bifurcated. It's split now. Like mm -hmm. you have this one part of society that's like, this is horrendous. We got to shoot these people. They're, they're yeah, terrible. Yeah. They're evil. They're wicked. Yeah. I, they're definitely terrible, evil. Yes, and then you have yeah. this other portion of society that's like, endorsing that kind swung of stuff. so like, far to the other side like, now what is it nambla Na national american boy love association yeah. you've got stuff like national this association of, of man boy love man or whatever boy. something what, like what the heck like how, that's that, effed <laughs> up like this was this was oh my god you couldn't even talk about this stuff yeah, 15 yeah. 20 years ago without getting laughed at and now it's like oh no this um, actually exists age yeah. is age is a concept i'm age fluid if i want to if i want to think that i'm goodness. you know yeah. 10 years old then i can like <laughs> little girls or whatever i mean and what and this I'm, is coming yeah. out this is what i'm yeah. talking about like it's kind of splitting it's being exposed. society yeah. well i don't know you have people that are really there was a vice uh i think it was vice that was talking about this guy he said yeah. uh, he's a pedophile and he wants to be accepted for that it's a sexual choice now because this is the postmodern society that we live in when did when did it become okay to i mean and, and this is i think this is how we view children what what is what are, why are we protect why you know the children are supposed to be protected and nurtured and cared for and given the space and security to develop into who they are they are the most fragile and from what i've been talking to people who have beef with the education system to this and that i mean why are we why are we not protecting children? Like this is this is insane that we think that our sexual desires and preferences can now be imposed on someone who is ages. Again, this is just the relativity, I guess. You know. Yeah, everything's become relative. relative Age you know? is relative. Preferences are relative. There's no moral right or wrong. Yeah, we There's should no understand. No, the human mind at that age is developing. You can't. Yeah, but you, you can't tell it. You can't. Like their their argument is, you can't tell a two year old that he's not a boy. If he wants to be a girl, he can be a girl. And then you get this stuff yeah. down the road where, yeah. oh my gosh, it's just it's going in the wrong direction. We can just 
you know, ended at that. Yeah. So but this is again, it's kind of a tangent. No, no, that's that's okay. I I wanted to talk a little bit though about um, revenge. I think and anger, like yeah. public cry for justice. Um, I think this is an important kind of theological point to get at. This, you know, we see the death of someone like Epstein, who I mean, whatever research you know people have done or know about. I mean, you know, he's he had this island. There was essentially like what children kept. What what there was like, like essentially. How do I say it? Just you know, human trafficking done yeah, on this human island. Trafficking. I mean, that's the, that's yeah. the best way to say this. Um, and worse. And, and, and far, far and worse. worse. And yeah. we're not, you know, I mean, yeah, let's just keep it at that. The point is, though, is that um, when we when I see someone like him die, I'm like, wow, divine retribution. He deserved it. Um, and in one sense, yeah, the uh, in unrepent sin has a consequence. Sure. But as Christians, I want to talk a little bit about revenge. I want to talk about justice. And I've been reading a book, The End of Memory, uh, by Miroslav Volf. Uh, I think he's Yugoslavian. Um, and he talks a little bit about abuse he had when he was, I think it was in the ni- 1983, I believe, he was he was in the Army. but he, Not the U.S. Army. Not the U.S. Army, no. He was, back, he was, he was dra- I guess, drafted back in, back in Yugoslavia. And so he had to leave America, leave his theological studies and his American wife and come back. And so he was considered a spy. And oh. he was interrogated because Whoa. he was he was married to an American. He was studying theology, but he was he was you know brought into this, so he was like he didn't want, really want to be there. But um, and he talks about and I want to read something about um, forgiving abusers, forgiving. And so this is kind of this this mentality of like we have so much hate towards these people. Yeah. And on one hand, I know God is so, he is he is the creator. He sees everything. Mm-hmm. He sees all the abuse and he sees all the victimness. And I, but I want to talk about a sin cycle. So so set the context for this. Okay, yeah. So what's going on with this guy? So So he's he's been he's been drafted in the yep. army. I believe it's like 1983 and so he is essentially gets to the point where he is interrogated okay. for, for months. So it's interrogating. Um, so he's being interrogated by, by by kind of the same guy he refers to him as Captain G. Um and so I I want to I'm trying not to lose my train of thought, but let me just read read something that he says about um about forgiveness and how, and the whole book is, it talks about this topic. It's about, you know, re- remembering rightly. That's the whole point. What's how the do title we remember- of the book? It's called The End of Memory, Remembering Rightly in a Violent World. But the whole point is about how do we, how do we live out like Romans twelve twenty one. So, so here's what he says. To triumph fully, evil needs two victories, not one. The first victory happens when an evil deed is perpetuated. The second victory, when evil is returned. So think revenge. After the first victory, evil would die if the second victory did not infuse it with new life. In my own situation, I could do nothing about the first victory of evil, but I could prevent the second. Captain G, this interrogator, would not mold me into his image. Instead of returning evil for evil, I would heed the Apostle Paul and try to overcome evil with good. Romans 12, 21. After all, I myself had been redeemed by the God who in, who in Christ died for the redemption of the ungodly. And so once again, now in relation to Captain J, I started walking and stumbling in the footsteps of the enemy-loving God. Um, so he, he, he skipping down, he says, many victims believe that they have no obligation whatsoever to love the wrongdoer and are in, inclined to think that if they were, in fact, to love the, the wrongdoer, they would, retre- they would betray rather than fulfill their humanity. Hmm. So <clears throat> the whole book, explores this question. And I'm not saying this is easy, and nor is he. <laughs> this is the first chapter, by the yeah. way. Um, so we know what we should do, right? Um, and so when we, we when we talk about this kind of evil, um, like, my, my, my heart boils. You know, and I have friends who have been sexually abused, and I've talked with them, and they're like, I have so much anger. And I'm like, I know you do. I can feel it. Like, I think, and, and that's, the, and that's that, that one side of culture yeah. that isn't, is, hasn't agreed with this, like this is wrong. Yeah, this is so wrong. So, so yeah. you said something. We know what we should do. Mm-hmm. Um, that being, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Yeah. So that's what we should do. Yeah. But like, you said the book explores that. How do we do that? Yeah. How, like, mo- I think even Christians don't even necessarily believe that. We'll read that and say, yeah, yeah that's a good. It's a good thing to think about. But when but, push comes to but shove, when push comes to shove, I was raped. I was abused. Yeah, I was, yeah. you know, abandoned. I was orphaned. Like, yeah. How do, what we, do, you do? How do we do? What that? do you do? How do you deal with those that emotional trauma and that what there they is, have done to you? What this perpetrator has done to you? There is no easy answer, and there is no quick fix solution. Yeah, uh, and and this is what I'm realizing in my own struggles in life is that 
I really believe this full heartedly. Our relationship with God as father, as as caregiver, as as just the source of life is to, is that is that relationship with God is far more important than ever, than all these externals because as I have started to see God rightly in my own life, I've seen my own areas of of sin start to become sanctified. And so for so I would look for someone who has this kind of anger, wrestle with it talk to God about it. If you can't, it's not about you doing better with God. This is what I've realized in my own life. We keep trying to do better so we can just come to God right now. Come to God right now with whatever it is, your food issues, your body image issues, your anger, your violence, your sexual tendencies, your 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 revenge anger. Come to him and talk to him about it because yeah. he listens. He actually, I love NF actually, the rapper. Um, <laughs> yeah. And he actually talks about it too. There's people who struggle with this kind of are going through abuse and if I believe he was abused as well they always use the analogy of like having a house and taking that that perpetrator and shoving him somewhere in the basement in a locked room but he's still there and he uses the same analogy and I thought of NF because it's like how do we let God into our house yeah how do we let God in to rearrange the furniture I think it's interesting when he talks about like the heart knocking at the door yeah you know the demons coming in and making a home in your heart like it, it's 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 an interesting analogy to see show up kind of in these other areas of like culture, you know, in this book and in, in, in mm. the music industry. Um, and so I would just say, it's not easy. And I'm not going to say, we just need to do better. And I don't think that's what Jesus wants either. Oh, you just need to do this. No, wrestle with it. And God's going to work in your life. I mean, it's, I think most of this is just opening your the door of your own heart saying, God, this is a problem. God, I can't fix it. Yeah. God, I th- come I, in. Yeah. I think of the passage, I don't remember exactly where it is, but it talks about exposing things in the light of Christ. Yeah. You know, bringing it into the light brings exposure obviously it's very tender it's very yeah. sensitive topics to talk about but when we <coughs> when we bring it into the light of scripture when mm-hmm. we bring it into prayer when we bring it into even you know if possible conversations with our brothers and sisters in Christ yeah um and I want to touch on that a second in yeah. a, in a second but when we bring it into the light of the church then what the church body can do is come in and hopefully interact with this person yeah. and encourage them, build them up, like not leaving them on their own. Yeah. I think what happens sometimes... Living when, in community. Yeah. Absolutely. I think, again, another tangent, rabbit hole. Go ahead, go ahead. I think the Western church mm-hmm. has really kind of forgotten what the family of Christ is. Okay. We talk about the body of Christ. Yeah. We talk about churches, you know. Yeah congregations and things like that it's a sunday show kind of in this do we sometimes. go to church and think wow everyone in this pew is my brother and sister in christ mm. do we think like that yeah. do we think i should have the same sort of compassion and love and mercy for that person even if i disagree with them on something it yeah. could be whatever yeah. but like that's my that's my sister in christ yeah first and foremost i should be looking out for her i should be this is this is what Christ wanted us to do. Like, I don't know. There's there's a lot swirling through my head yeah, right no, now. No. But just going back from <laughs> looking looking at Genesis and looking at Cain and Abel and the first family, like how it was broken because there was bitterness and there yeah. was jealousy and there was murder and it just spiraled out of control. But God was always like. He was always trying to encourage humanity to love one another because we 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 are, in a sense, a family. You yeah. know, we're related. We're not all of the church. We're not all brothers and sisters in Christ, obviously. You know, people in yeah. other religions are not of the church. But, man, we still need to, like, they are made in God's image. Yeah. And we should evangelize to them. We should, we should I mean, try John, and reach John them. 1, 1, 7, I believe, is like Jesus came so he could essentially offer adoption as sons that when we believe we are adopted we are we are the what the prodigal son you know, these are different analogies but like we are we were once far away but god brings us back being being adopted into the family of god and that's what faith in jesus christ is is you become a child of god you become you are restored you know because when we're lost you know you're still you're still made in god's image but you're not back in the family come back to the family of God. And I'd say my own healing, you know, especially with you in my life, you know, I just, I think of, I think of how community is what brought me healing in some areas of my life or other people. I've seen like, how I'm like, no, you need a community. You really do. And pray for, I pray for that. Yeah. And see, that's that whole thing. If you have no one,
pray because you know God is the one working. He's the one moving. And all like literally even this podcast, I thought this wouldn't happen today. Things were falling apart, people couldn't make it, camera guys just weren't able to make it today. Um you almost weren't able to make it and I was just like, "Oh dang it, this is a really important topic." And just just I'm kind of running out. But the whole point is just praying. I was like, "God help me." Just I was God help me. I just opened my arms and I said, "God help me." Like with something as simple as this, putting over a podcast. For goodness sake, how much more with those deep traumas in our life? God, I don't know where to start. Cry. Yes. Here's where you start. Cry out to God. That's it. What did Hagar, was it Hagar in, in, the, in Genesis? She was, you know, fled, fled Sarah and Abraham. Yeah. Yeah, she took off. She cried, and God is, I'm the God who sees. But it's not just the God who sees. It's the God who sees and does something. Yeah. And, that, and that's what that Hebrew word means. I was talking to a teacher. I'm the God who sees. And, and I mean, it implies he's doing something. He's going to fix it, you know? Um and that's beautiful. So, okay. So yeah, that was getting back to it. Yeah. So that was kind of talking about revenge and how do we, because every, every person I've seen talk about the pedophilia issue and so, so much anger and it's rightly like I demand justice too. And there should be justice on this earth too. But let's also, let's also see, see something that I, I kind of want to talk about. So the sin cycle, um, we were talking about families in, you know, who believe kind of, and it was interesting get seeing some of the people that perpetrate these systems, they themselves were victims of sexual abuse and child abuse as children because their parents did it to them, um, and I think or the, someone else did it. Yeah. To them. yeah. And so what's interesting is I was, we were watching the Joker, um, or I wasn't watching it. I didn't want to watch it because I didn't want to. But someone was talking about it, <laughs> and what was interesting was that, and this, according to this person, this movie is exemplifying this kind of system. The Joker. Spoiler alert. Okay, just anyone out there, spoiler alert for the Joker. So cover your ears if you'd like. I don't, I don't like whatever. The point is, is that the Joker <laughs> is, I believe he was an orphan in the show. I, I'm not quite sure. But the point is at the end of the movie, this is a spoiler, I think he kills Batman's parents. So the point was, and he talks about this in this book, and I, and I really want to, he talks about like the different paths of like well, how you deal with your trauma. Yeah. And he says, one is you can try to ignore it, stuff it in the basement, which is kind of what he tried to do initially. Then there's some people who, who want revenge. But that revenge ends up taking itself out, not on the perpetrator, but on innocence. And that's exactly what the Joker does. He says, I'm going to hurt someone else. And that was Batman. Yeah. Well, what was Batman do? He has the same trauma. His parents were taken away from him. He becomes a hero. So it's interesting to see that. What do you do with your trauma? Do you mm. let it heal you? Do you let it, um, do you, well, I'd say, do you let God heal you? Do you let God into that? Or do you want revenge? See, revenge is tricky because we have justice. We seek justice. That's righteous. But when sin comes in and it perverts it, it becomes revenge. And I feel that. I'm like, you wronged me. How much more is God wronged? He's the one who made me. He's the one who made the other person. I think God is hurting so much more. Yeah. And yeah. so, and he's the one who says, vengeance is mine. And that's the thing is when God, when the unrepentant, when people, and literally repentance is offered to everyone, but when you don't, there is still a punishment. And like when that happens, I, that justice is satiated. Like, and it's funny, just seeing the Jeffrey Epstein thing, there was a beer company printing, uh, Epstein did not kill himself. Yeah, I and I was that. like, and I was getting angry. And, but then when I saw this, I was like, that's kind of funny. Like the darkness can't hide because, you know, when God's moving and the light is shown, the light is shown and people see and darkness can't hide. And I felt like satisfied. I'm like, yeah, like. Look at this. People are seeing this, you know, yeah, like yeah. even if it is just a meme, you know, people are seeing this and it's and we're starting to expose the deep darkness. But I'd like to say even to those people who are evil, and that's why we're talking about this sin cycle. What do you do with that? These people chose to take their trauma and to perpetuate pedophilia, this kind of abuse and evil. And there is a punishment for that. And that is wrong. But there are those, and, and we see this. So let's let's not. And this is what Corinthians, I think, was it first uh, Romans. Sorry, not Corinthians. Romans twelve twenty one. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. That is one of the hardest. It is. It is one of the hardest things a Christian or anyone, Christian, non Christian, forgiving and being merciful and gracious yeah. when you have been so deeply wronged, and you it's know it's against it. everything in you. You're like, no, I demand. It is one justice. of the hardest things. Yeah. You could do. It's one of the hardest things I had to do. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I know. And so that's, we could go on and on about that, that but I wanted to touch on that because when, especially when talking about pedophilia and these kinds of things, like how do, how do we forgive, you know? And, and there's a difference to forgiving and forgetting. We don't forget. And this is kind of the book, the end of memory, r rightly remembering, a viol remembering rightly in a violent world. It's not about forgetting. Um, it's about how do we rightly remember this? And I haven't finished the book, so I don't quite know the answer. If you'd like to read it, uh, Miroslav Volf. I'll just say that that's the that's the author. Spell it. M I R O S L A V V O L F. So, um, if you'd like to read that book, go ahead. But um, 
but yeah, and I'm not saying this is easy, and I'm not saying that. And here's another thing. We've talked about this in my Theology of Suffering class, which is a wonderful class here at Moody, Moody Bible Institute. Um, but we talk about uh, how there isn't always reconciliation. Yeah. So we can forgive, but there isn't always reconciliation. That's a blessing. Reconciliation is a blessing. I've prayed for that in my own life. I haven't seen it that in some It doesn't always areas, happen. But it doesn't. It will, and we can say, yes, one day it will happen, God willing, if both people are saved. You yeah. know, and, and, but the, the other but side the, of eternity. But some that people don't. That may be the only time you see it. But yeah, some abusers don't even see that they've done anything wrong. And so this is a problem, especially when we talk about people who've been raped or people who've been abused as children by yeah. parents. And I'm hearing this in my class. I'm like wanting to cry. I'm like, this is awful. And some of these stories, like there isn't reconciliation because the, the perpetrator doesn't see they've done anything wrong. And, and like the whole world, if we shone a light on this, oh my goodness, this is sin. This is evil. This is wrong. But sometimes people don't see it. They're so lost. Um, but then again, we find out, oh, that person was abused too. Oh, then th that person was abused. Sin, the sin cycle. It's so crazy to see how the devil, like, especially when we talk about like generational stuff, deep topic. We've talked about this many times. Yeah. I don't have an easy answer for it, but like, oh, uh, mom had mental illness, treated her daughter one way. Oh, the daughter had mental illness, you know, you know, this kind of thing. Or, uh, father had alcohol, you know, alcohol, alcoholism, excuse me, uh, problem. Son does, you know, porn addiction, yeah. sexual addiction. You know, this is kind of like where I'm coming from dealing with like, Okay, well, what did my my those before me have? What did they struggle with? You know, and yeah. I'm seeing almost like a gen. It's in some aspect there is a genetic element. It is like a generational. To it. Curse. I mean, we talk about epigenetics and how literally the choices you make are encoded genetically. How human suffering unlocks certain genetic material. We were talking about genetic this. memory. Genetic that memory. Sort of thing. There's a lot that people are figuring out about this, and it's like you know we're not just you know the spirit matter. You know, we're just we're not just matter, but we're not just like spirits up here. And these things are intimately connected. And so, um, again, we could we could go on and on about that. I know I know we're going. That a would place. be an interesting topic at some point. We will, and we will cover it um, for those uh, interested. But uh, but so I just let's let's move on a little bit here. So we've talked about um, Epstein, and so I just want to talk about like pornography right now. You know, this is a huge problem. Um, just in like something that's affected my own life personally, and just. What ninety percent of the Christian men out there, and I'd say just the rest of the world, for goodness sake, um, because this is kind of what we're all leading up to. We're, we have we have this sex saturated culture, right? Yeah, and so we see this playing out in how sex is also part of identity. You know, we have um, we, we it's have, so closely entwined with people's identity. I think now. we need to take a pause real quick. Um. We're talking about we want to touch pornography. on pornography um, and, the and, and the sexual saturated culture. Yeah, culture. Sex saturated culture. I mean, we look at you know we see it like you know in some pretty high places. You know, with the, we were talking about Epstein earlier um, about how we're seeing this kind of I'd say sexual perversion in, in just high places. You know, yeah. Um, but it's I, all I over the place. It's all over the place. And so, um, but I think what really bothers me is um, stuff like uh, I think it was Barnes and Noble's drag queen. Ra Drag queen book reading day for children. Oh, it's all over the place. This kind of stuff. Um, but just they do it at libraries. And looking at the kind of you know, the kinds of things that are being propagated in pornography, we have incestuous stuff. We have uh, just just blatant, you know, just this mixture of genders. Again, you've just got all sorts abuse, of abuse, yeah, violence. Abuse, yeah, you know. And these are th these are things. things. And what's so terrible. sad? And I'm speaking honestly because someone needs to. I, these are things that people are consuming. Children are consuming things that. I never thought of is right there on the internet for some 12 year old to see some 10 year old to see 11, eight year old. And these are the ages. I mean, what is, I, I'd love to get some statistics. I think, yeah. Um, what is it? I remember in my own case, I think I was exposed to pornography. Mm -hmm. Definitely under the age of 10. <coughs> I think Same it was here. probably yeah. around maybe, I mean, I think you were younger, but I was probably yeah. about eight, mm -hmm. nine, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, and so it's it's and, and it, I didn't I didn't really know what it was, but it was like a switch went off, and I was like, I mean, coming full circle, just I mean, this whole pedophilia, sexual abuse thing, like, no wonder this is a problem. The whole, I mean, whether you were abused, you know, that kind of trauma at a young age, how your brain is developing, oh my goodness, the kind of trauma it's having there, you know, disassociation disorders, all sorts of stuff. You see people like why this, and then this is just like a, a system that fuels up, but to like someone like us. This is your first exposure to a beautiful gift that God gave, but it's totally perverted. You know, this yeah. beautiful gift that God made, he's like, I want you to experience 
the intimacy. See, remember, and this is something that's kind of weird, but it's like God isn't male or female. You know, he's, he's he is God the Father. This is his role to us, God the Son. You know, you know, Father, light, a life giver. You know, Son, the one doing the will of the Father, respecting the Father. You know, and then the Spirit, the one joining them. But the thing is, this is there's there's an intimacy in the Trinity that you know you know man, that I think God, I believe God is showing in the intimacy of the sexual union between a man and a woman in marriage. There's something very beautiful there. That is, that is being perverted. And that's why the devil attacks it so hard, because he sees that, wow, this is such a beautiful picture of God. Let me destroy it. Why? Because if they knew that this is what God was like, they would never want what I have. See, and what is it? Yeah. We were talking about entertainment is the devil's, um, what is it, counteraction or, or solution or perversion of God's, of satisfaction in God. You said something yeah. like that. Entertainment is the devil's <coughs> response to the contentment of the yeah. Lord. And so I, I see that, like, the devil has to take something good that is beautiful. He doesn't create. He, he can't takes create, things. Yeah, he can't create it. And he corrupts He corrupts them. It. It, Especially, I've, I've noticed this in, in my marriage. I've noticed this in my walk with the Lord and in my relationships in church. Mm -hmm. Everything that bears... Um, Everything that bears some resemblance to the God's creation, yeah. Every, everything yeah, that yeah. bears God's image, basically, not just man. I mean, I'm using the term God's image in a yeah. broader sense, like yeah. anything that is good, good that God created, whole perfect balance, whatever it is. Yeah, Satan really does not like. He needs to corrupt it, twist it, destroy it, because yes, yes. that's just it. That's that's his whole motive. He hide God. Hide God from man. You don't need God. God doesn't exist. You know, don't do things the way God, he has silly rules for you. And you start reading like, this is how it was always meant to be because this is how man is most satisfied. This is how man is most fulfilled, knowing what's, God. What's how it's supposed to be? The way God has made things, the order that God has given. You know, there's, there's an order to way things are supposed to work. And it's funny because sin, temptation, these things say, God's just keeping you from this. You know, pornography. You think that you need to get married to enjoy sexual pleasure, do it that's, right now. You can have it right now. That's the lie from the very beginning. Yep. You know, you can become your own God. You can do something on your own apart from God. You don't need God. God. Yep. That's it's, what the it's lie terrible. Is. It's terrible. That is the original lie. <laughs> Satan, I mean, Ecclesiastes yeah. says there's nothing new under the sun. Yeah. That I mean, includes the tempter. I, I, he, I, he's yeah. still using his old tricks, but in a different way. It's mm -hmm. spun in a different the, fashion. The, what is it? The, the the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Yeah. You know, I see these, we see these things um, come out. You know, this, it looks good. It's desirable. You know, it, it, whatever. We could break that down. I'm not really quite sure how to, but, but like, this is it. You know, and especially, and I've seen that, like, and, and like, this is why I think we have such a dissatisfied culture. And it's just funny seeing the research that pornography makes, you know, men more, uh, what just the BS. Let's just call it. It's just BS. Like, oh, it's good for your sexual health. Like, what? And it's funny. This is total garbage because, like— Terrible for people, your marriage. And people <laughs> people are seeing, like, no, this doesn't work. No, no. Our—what our, what is it? Freaking erectile dysfunction. I'm Again, sorry. I told you there's a lot being talked about. I mean, it's it's just skyrocketed in the last— I was, I was looking at a research article. I'm like, no wonder. We have people, men that no longer know how to relate to a wife to a spouse. They, they don't know how to because we've, we've and again, we're, and hopefully later we'll be having someone come on and share about um, the relationship we have with technology. And she was mentioning like uh, the creation of like sex robots and how we, you know, oh we're my just, gosh. kind of, it's just. That's I'm, a rabbit trail in its own. Of course. And we're going to leave that for another time, but just, it's amazing to see, you know, man having this beautiful, man and woman having a beautiful relationship together that God has made. For, and see, this is the thing. Like, it's not, it's not really sex that I think people want. I think it's intimacy and to be known. I think that's really what people are seeing. There's, there's something in that relationship that I think, I mean, we th oh, we have the sexual drive, this and that. But, like, I think at a deeper level, people are not satisfied with the superficiality of sex because once the biological urge is satisfied, this and that, there's an intimacy that is not met. There is something about the the knowing. God wants to know his people. And it's using the same Hebrew uh Verb, by the way, that that is used for Adam knew his wife in a sexual way, you know. That and God's using this to be like the kind of relationship God wants with us is is very deep. It's very it's very um, intimate. It's an intimate. It's relationship. personal. It's a personal relationship, and it's not. Oh, you know, God is. Oh, sorry. Did you want to say? Shoot, shoot, please. No, yeah. I'm good. No, okay, go. Oh, oh yeah, keep yeah. Keep going, guys. <laughs> no, no, yeah, yeah. I just, I just. Um, th this is a beautiful thing. God doing. Oh, this is weird. God, you know. 
God created sex. God created male and female. The whole yeah. point is, and he's also, he's, you know, we're the bride of Christ. We're the, he's the father to us. These are analogies meant to represent the deep relationship God wants for us. Yeah. The kind of relationship you have with the spouse. I'm your creator. I want to know you. I want to be involved with your life like your spouse is. I want to be, in, I have the care for you like a father. This is yeah. what God is saying in these metaphors and the analogies. And, and so sex, that's why the devil's distorting it. It's this beautiful picture so, of, yeah, so, so go ahead. So let's yeah. talk about that for a second. Okay. Satan is corrupting this, but he's, I, in my reflections on it, I, I see him doing it in, in different, mm -hmm. different strategies. He's yeah, using yeah. different strategies and he's breaking it down in different ways. He's using, he's using the breakdown of the family. Yeah. He's, you know, destroying the family unit because on that society is built. I like, agree. Yep. Husband, wife, mother, father, and then kids. And then th that's and how a society comes moral... together. That's how a village comes yeah. together. That's how a town, and then a city, and then a, you know a state or a region. <laughs> and then we that's try to happens. get the school to educate the moral infrastructure, but uh, that's another topic happen. too. Yeah. You know, Continue. if you break down yeah. the family, if you break down how kids are educated, it's it's you get where we are. It's today, nasty. Kind of. Yeah, yeah but so yeah. so there's the breakdown of the family, and then there's the corruption of sex. Yeah. Um, corruption of desires, and that's where I think lust comes in because yeah. there's there's this there's this need to be sexually gratified that is unnatural. Yeah, it's I don't know for lack of a better phrase, it's almost like pure lust, and that's what well, drives. It's, it's like a greed. It's you know, greed, it's but never, it's lust after this. A never it's ending. Yeah. The lust of the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. Um, yeah. It's so separate from sex. It's so separate. You know, being married, there's mm -hmm. an intimacy that is, it's so much different. It is yeah. so much different than looking at pornography. And, you know, having struggled with this yeah. for, for many years, being free from it now, I can, I can look back and reflect on it and be like, wow, that is, that is so not, you know, it's so not the same thing. The yeah. desire that you have when you, want to look at pornography or yeah. or do that sort of thing. It's so different from being with your wife or husband and that's that's normal. Yeah. That's what's good. That's what's right. But yeah. Satan has come and he's corrupted and he thinks he or he wow. gets people to think or partner with. Yeah. Oh, I need this because, you know, this is my desire. This is my feeling. This is my urge. I need to go with that. Yeah. That's not that's not how you're built. You can't satisfy that urge. You can't satisfy that. It's never ending, it's, and it's going to drag you noose. down. It's just, it's just a, it's just a trap and a noose, you know. And then one more thing. Yeah. It's, it's not just the separation of the husband and wife now with pornography. It's yeah. also, I know we don't want to get into this right now, but like sex robots and things like that. Yeah. He's, he's also introducing this another field v with VR, virtual four, reality. Four I was the just going to say yeah, that. Four of the five companies. I was just talking with. Are, uh, Porn companies working on VR right now. Say that again. Four out of the five main VR companies. This is according, to, I believe, Josh McDowell at a, a, the conference they had here a couple years ago. Said four out of the five uh, VR companies are porn companies. Wow. So, so actually, I was just talking that, about this yesterday. Someone brought up the topic of, yeah, um, like uh, the Motorola Razor phone. Okay. You know that old flip phone and yeah. stuff like that. So they reintroduced that. Yeah. And it's uh, new, and you know, it's got this foldable screen, and we're talking yeah. about how that technology might be integrated. And I, I was thinking maybe like Google Glass type thing, or mm -hmm. um, we were, we were just talking on that, and we got on the topic of pornography. We got on the topic of how it has driven technological advances, like the VCR. Yep. I don't know if you remember that, but like cassettes. Okay. Yeah. The reason that took off and succeeded as mm. A viable way to bring movies into the home was for pornography. Yeah, it beat out. It's kind of a. It beat out other forms of, of technology. Yeah. Pardon the phrasing. Uh, okay. It, <laughs> it, it. Uh, I can't remember the name. It wasn't Laserdisc. Um, something. There was another form that yeah. VHS was competing with, and VHS won because it was simpler. It was, yeah. you know, more effective. And then you get DVDs. You know, you get MP3s and these files and the. The internet, the computer, yeah. the home, the the personal computer at home. Part of the reason that took off as an industry is because people wanted to have the comfort to look at pornography in the privacy of their own home. And look at and look at what is created. Look it's at what is disastrous. Created. My my biggest concern is children because, you know, my eight year old. You know, I've got eight. I have, you know, eight year old friends. I'm you know that I know or people I'm working with, like seeing their children. It's just like, you know, like like. 
you know, I, I had what was it? I was at a summer camp with some friends, and their their grandson was there, and I'm friends with him, and he's like, you know, he's like I don't know, eight or ten, and you know, we we hang out, but he's got, and I realize, you know, I I come to the camp, you know, just to get away from everything. He's always got his Android phone out, and I was like, um, he's probably like ten, and I'm like, and I'm like, I know he's doing stuff on that phone. I could tell, you know, and it was just like some of the things he the things he knew. He was saying some things, and I'm like. I don't even like I didn't know that when I was your age, you know, and like yeah. I was just like, oh no, I could I could see it. I could see it. And you know, and I just yeah, it, it, it's the it's the perversion of the children because then that's normal to them. Same with the the uh, uh drag queen book reading, you know, this is normal, you know, and you grow up after being conditioned and <laughs> then they have children and it's like what are they exposed to? It's this 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 further degradation. So anyway, I, I want to shine some hope into this. We've been very uh oh, we have a problem. So how do we how do we shine hope into this? This is something I really want to talk about. Um, we go on and on this and that about how terrible the culture is and this and that. But but here here's the hope. Um, and this is where I, I I want to kind of share a little bit of just, just my own story. Dealing with something like pornography over really really the span of my life, I've looked for a solution. I've looked for a solution. What's the quick fix? What is the quick fix to our problem? Same and and, and we all deal with things. I don't know what it is for 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 you out there, but but we all have something, rage, eating, body image. Um, I think of mental, mental illness, a traumatizing childhood. We deal with this baggage. And this is what I said earlier. Your relationship with God is more important than anything else. Your relationship with God is what brings the healing because you're knowing your creator. That's the whole point of Jesus. That's the whole point of God coming to earth, dying for us, he's, he is shaming wickedness by being the weakest thing possible. I think it's beautiful. God is so powerful. He could come with all the power, and he will one day. He will one day. I believe he will one day. But the point is, he comes to earth to break the sin cycle. We were talking about that. The abuser was abused, and they abused their child. You know, so it's like there's this cycle, you know. And so um, God breaks that by being the weakest thing, a God who comes to earth and dies. And yet he says, I will, I will break this. Believe in me. Believe in me. Um, yeah. Yeah. Did you? So so anyway. Um, but but my my point being, um, just just I lost my train of thought. Um, what what is the point? Being someone who who um, oh, being someone who uh, has struggled with this. How? Where's the hope? It's it's not a quick solution. I'll tell you. Here, here's what it is. Your relationship with God. My relationship with God has brought healing into my life that I never thought imaginable. Andrew, Andrew here, you know, you've been, you've been such a help to me um, in, in my own, in my own pro again, community, having a community of people around you. And so I just, I want to say to people out there, like, there is hope. There is hope for whatever it is you're going through, and especially for those who struggle with sexual addiction. I know how prevalent that is. I'm here at a, a Christian school and just talking with people who are like, how do I break the grip of a, an yeah. addiction off of my life? Yeah. How do I break that addiction? Um. And so I think if yeah, I could shoot. jump in for yeah. a second, I think <laughs> for me, what was critical was in, in overcoming this, what was critical for me to do was to really understand uh, the purpose of community, one, mm -hmm. and two, really understand my identity in Christ. Okay, yeah. Because growing up, I was addicted to pornography, but I didn't understand what Christ had done for me. Mm -hmm. Like, I hated it. I hated that yep, I was addicted here. to this. Yeah. It, it's it was Romans, miserable. Romans, uh, 11, Romans 7? or eight, I do the things seven. I don't want yep. to do, I do and not, I, do the, I don't do the things I want to do. It's no longer I who sin, but the sin that lives in me. But it's still, like, we're struggling with this. This yeah. is part of who we are in this body. Of, so who will free me from this body of sin? Thank thank God that he, you know, this is this is Romans 7 and 8. 8 is where, read Romans 8, by the way. So anyway, keep going. I mean, not to, not to you know, throw out some platitudes, but it yeah. really is the gospel. It is the fact that Jesus Christ has come to earth. He has lived a life worthy of sacrifice so that we could, you know, in his death and in our acceptance of his yeah. righteousness over us, we can live free from these sorts of things. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand that. I didn't know that I could live free yeah. from that sort of thing. I wanted to. I desperately wanted to. <laughs> yeah. But also really, really big, a big step for me was getting involved with other, other, a church community. Yeah. You know, I didn't really have that. I was isolated. And that's something that pornography does, isolates. too. It isolates you. Keeps it you alone. It keeps you away. It keeps you dark. afraid. Yeah. You know? Shame. Shame is a Shame, huge part. Shame, fear, yeah. guilt, depression. I can't tell anyone about this. I'm so ashamed. You know, and this keeps you from getting the help you need. And then also it's like— Either that or yeah. sometimes, you know, not to go too deep or, to, you know, to— 
bash on people, but mm-hmm. sometimes you just have a, a seared conscience. You're like, I don't yeah. really care. I've been there. I've definitely been there. You yeah. know, just like it's never going to change. It doesn't matter. You know, God's not helping me anymore. You know, I've had this feeling many times, you know, where it's like, where am I in, in my journey? You know, and, and so you just shut down. You know, I've seen this many times. And having a community around you that's like, no, 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 encourages you. No, 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 keep walking the walk. No, this isn't easy. No, this no, this is a problem. And especially with people who are um, shown pornography at a young age or just abused as children. You know, I know just so many people when the things that are done, just childhood development, things that are done as a child, it affects you. It's so critical. It's so critical. Those years, and that's why, like, as someone, you know, God willing, I want a family one day. I'm like, I want to be ready. Oh, my goodness, to to have, to, to, to be ready for that, you know, God yeah. willing to, to deal with the addictions, to, to deal with, with the unresolved, just family dynamic or, tr- or pr- troubles in my own life, you know, and just becoming, again, just becoming more of the man God made me to be before bringing another life into the world so that, you know, again, perpetuating that sin. And not that I would take, and again, we were talking about this in my Theology of Suffering class, but just Maybe, you know, we look at like, you know, this is a tangent, but just like looking at like a, like a father who, who was abused while well, he took the healing as far as he could. I, you know, I may, I may think this may be the, a personal instance with me and my own father. I wonder, my dad took the healing as far as he could take it, you know, and he did the best he could. And maybe he didn't invite God into that as much as he could have, but he did the best he could. And now it's my job to take it as far as I can. And maybe my kid will say one day, Dad, why didn't you try hard? I'm like, this is as good as I could do, you know? And so I don't know. I'm going to try as hard as I can and trust in God that I'm going to heal as much as I can. You can heal as much as we, you can. But anyway, that was a yeah. tangent. But getting well, back I, to actually, it. Actually, yeah. if we could stay there for a second. Sure. I think that's an interesting thought, but just to push back on it a little please, bit. Please, please do. People might come away with the idea that, oh, I can't really progress beyond this point. Mm. I, I don't believe I, it. I disagree I with that. that. Yeah. I would say yeah. all things are possible through Christ who strengthens That's right. That's right. Thank you for saying that. Hope, yeah. faith, and love, the greatest of these things is love. Like pushing towards that goal, pressing on yeah. towards the end. Not that we Let's have achieved not limit that. God. Not yeah. that we have achieved yeah. this. You know, Paul Paul talks about uh I might be in Philippians, I think, talking about not that he has achieved this glorified state, but that he presses on, regardless mm-hmm. of the surrounding turmoil or troubles. I mean, I think he was in prison when he wrote that. <laughs> Don't let these entanglements which so easily ensnare us. I think that's Galatians. Don't go back to that. You know, press on towards the goal. The, right. the goal. We move from glory to glory. Like, as Christians, we're to press on to that. Yeah. Uh, press on I, into that. I appreciate you saying that. I, I not I'm, that I'm not that I'm coming yeah. off, you know, coming down with the hammer saying No, I know. Yeah. But it, it's helpful to say I never want to limit God. Like I think a lot of times in my own life, we're the ones who are stopping God by like, oh guys, just open your open your heart. Let me in. I knock at the door. Open. You know, and maybe that's, maybe he, you've opened the door of, and he's living in your house, but maybe there's a basement room and that's where the trauma lives yeah. and you've kept it locked. Maybe upstairs in the attic, there's something you don't want God in. Got to open it. I, I was reading a book about. Um, well, we were kind of talking about that a little bit uh, a couple of weeks ago in yeah. Matthew when Jesus says, ask and seek and knock. Ask. Yeah. yeah. At, you, 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 there, you're not a, receiving because like, you're not It's asking. not just metaphorical. There's, there, it's almost like a practical sort of to-do list, so to speak. Like. Mm. We ask God, you know, we pray to God, we knock. As, we a, pers- as a child of God, praying, yeah. Yeah, we knock, we keep knocking. Mm-hmm. Um, Jesus said, he, he referenced the parable of the the, the poor woman who yeah. went to the judge and just kept on, you know, How kept much on more pressing will that your judge. God in yeah. heaven, yeah. Who, yeah, who he him. wants us to press into this. He wants us to pursue him. He mm-hmm. wants us to, not under our own strength, but like, to the best of our abilities. He he draws near to us as we draw near to him. Yeah. And then knocking, you know, ask, knock, and seek. Keep seeking these sorts of things. Keep seeking healing. Keep seeking yeah. restoration. It's it's so hard. I'm not I'm not trying to slight anyone who's been through these sorts of things. I've it's been hard. Through- these are these are hard. And everyone has their own tr- story, yeah. their own trauma, addiction, problem. And and it's like, and so and that's another thing. I just want to say. We, we're not going to be right on all this, but the whole point is, like, the relationship with God. Yeah. That is key. That is key. And not everything we may say you agree with out there, that's okay. That's the whole point of this podcast, just saying things the way we're seeing it. And, and if we're not seeing it the right way, then let me know. I'll eventually get some way of contacting me. Let me know how you're seeing it. You know, I'd love to read it. Love to, love to you know, I'm open to that. I'm open to critiquing my own view. But the yeah. point is, yeah, is, is, is 
our relationship with God. And for me, and, and, and Andrew, you can attest this, but just even back, um, you know, last semester for me, the way I viewed God was so drastically different. You know, hating God, you know, so I, I was in place of hating God, but I think it's so cruel. How do you view God? You know, this, this is, I'm speaking of you guys, you guys out there. How do you view God? Yeah. Is he, and, and it's funny looking at the father analogies. Did you have a distant father at home? Because sometimes God seems distant. Did you have an abusive father at home? Because sometimes God seems abusive, you know? You know, and it's funny, these things carry over, you know? And so for me, I, you know, kind of felt like God was there, kind of wasn't. You know, in my own relationship with my dad growing up, I was like, yeah, I knew he was there. I mean, we, there was a period of my life where he was more there. I mean, now he's, you know, we're talking and he's back into my life. But but there was a season where it was like, ah, I don't really know. And so God kind of felt distant. Or even, even at one point, there was a point where, and this was mainly for other reasons, but just I saw God as very angry. You know, God is, um, you know, always very judgmental or very like, you didn't do this, so you're not going to get it. Maybe I got a little bit from my dad. I don't know. But, um, but yeah, so that, that's also something. So anyway, that was kind of a, kind of a tangent, but um, yeah. Is, is there anything else you want to touch on? Or um, There's so much we could talk about, yeah. honestly. <coughs> it's a big, a big topic. Um, I think... Uh, With, yeah. yeah. How long have we been going, by the way, Courtney? Just real quick. 51. Do we need to hit reset on the camera, by the way? Okay. Let's, do you want to keep keep going? I think we could, I think we could close it. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, um, yeah. Anyways, just to recap, we talked about, we talked about the sex saturated culture. Mm -hmm. We talked about Jeffrey Epstein a little bit and yeah. how that kind of, Highlights it high, definitely highlights. highlights several things. It highlights just how how perverse humanity can go. Yeah, you know how how perverse it can become, how in need of help we are as a culture, as a society. Yeah, and we talked about not so much practical things, but just kind of reflections and musings. Also, on, revenge and forgiveness. On revenge how do and we, forgiveness. How do we yeah. forgive evil? How how have we how, and and also knowing that that's not an easy. I would thing. like to come back to that topic. I don't think we touched on that. I don't think we went deep enough into that. But that was that's so yeah we'll interesting. It's more. such an interesting topic yeah. because you know in my own life in <laughs> this, my own this experience, whole book I'm reading I mentioned the end of memory. It's all about that. So I mean of course this is a huge huge topic. Yeah, yeah. in in my own experience it's been it's been so difficult and so challenging and I've learned a lot. I've I've learned a lot. You know I haven't I haven't always lived it out to the best of my yeah. abilities but um yeah yeah it's it's definitely worth coming back to and then finally yeah. just pornography and and how that affects family life how that affects us oh yes individually and oh, as yeah. brothers and sisters in christ as the church and what it's yeah. doing to us it's 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 all over the church it's yeah. throughout the church yeah. and we don't talk about it yeah, we don't talk about it enough. I mean, that's the point of this podcast is just to get get the truth out there. Let's let's at least identify a problem before we can start to fix it. Um, so you know, I, I think we're gonna go ahead and close. Um, and I'm just gonna end in prayer. I just want to pray. Yeah, um, dear God, thank you for the opportunity to do a podcast like this. I'm really excited to see what happens. Um, thank you for Andrew and Courtney being here today. Um, and just we're just all together talking about this. God, I just want the truth to be said. I want the truth to be seen. I want people to know that you're the answer. That thing, and that sounds so easy, but it can be so hard. Um, and I just want to remind everyone out there, God, that you, God, are the solution. You, God, the relationship with you, pursuing that in whatever way it looks like in someone's individual life right now, that is the key to all this pain, to all this healing. Um, and and uh, I wish I had a twelve-step program to healing. I don't, but I know that you're the answer, God. Um, and I and I know how you've been working in my life, Jesus. Um, and I just want to pray real quick against. Um, just, we, really, we were talking about all sorts of things with the pornography issue, God, the sex sex issues, God. So much healing needs to happen in the church and in the world. Um, and I just pray that, you know, I hope that this podcast helps some of you out there, out there, you guys, but um, my prayer, God, is that you would help those people listening right now. Um, help them and meet them right now and remind them that they are loved. Remind them that they are valued. And and, and, and and if they are not a child of God, those of you who ha don't believe in Jesus Christ, those of you who don't, know that God, God, is, God, is, God is for you. God is here. He died so that you can be reconciled to him. Um, and we'll talk about that more some other time. But that, that's it for now. Thanks for listening. Um, please tune in next time. Again, sorry I don't have a name for the podcast. We're still figuring that out. But thanks for listening, guys. God bless and have a good day.